I wonder if we're live. It's always difficult to know when the stream actually starts. You never know until someone writes the first comment saying that you're live. So let's see, are we live yet? Hmm. Are we? We are, we are, we are live. Okay, wonderful. So welcome to Eheji which is a little, I don't know if it's a little town, it, it's pretty small I think, uh, but a town in Fukui prefecture. So it's on the coast, the, the coast of the Sea of, the, sea of Japan, um, located about, it took me three and a half hours to get here. It took the Shinkansen from Tokyo to Maibara, which is I believe the stop before Kyoto. Uh, and then at Maibara I had to change to a different train that took another hour uh, to arrive to Fukui, which is the biggest town, biggest city in Fukui prefecture. Uh, and from there I got picked up by a car together with four other people uh, who, are, who were invi invited to a little kind of uh, test tour to one of the biggest Zen Buddhist temples in Japan, which is located over there. And that's where I will walk now. Uh, so I arrived here yesterday and this morning I got up at 4.30 um, to attend the morning service. Then we climbed the mountain, not this mountain, but another mountain not too far away from here. Um, the four of us together with a Zen monk. And uh, we did a bit of Zen meditation or Zazen as it's called in Japanese uh, up on the mountain and then when we were done we celebrated by having a bagel and then we went down the hill again. It was wonderful uh, and this place is gorgeous and wonderful so I will show it to you now. I will be here until tomorrow uh, then it's back to Tokyo again. We're actually staying here. This is a very very nice hotel on I think they have an onsen they, they have an outdoor bath I'm not sure if it's actually onsen or just a, a nice bath uh, but the rooms are gorgeous the food is amazing it's a pretty high-end place uh, I checked online and I believe it's about 40,000 yen per night per person to stay here so it's not a budget accommodation someone asks if I'm on holiday now not holiday it's what kind of holiday? I got invited to this little press trip uh, and uh, so yeah I'm doing it in exchange for my expertise I guess but but uh, I'm also enjoying myself very much uh, it's very nice to be here very relaxing and very yeah nice to get a little break from the hustle and bustle of everyday life in Tokyo and to just be surrounded with stunning nature is uh, yeah, very very nice so my plan is to walk up to the uh, temple unfortunately I can't film inside uh, the place is so beautiful so I wish I really really wish that I could show it to you but yeah I can't walk around inside with the, with the camera but uh, the surrounding area is pretty nice too and then I will come back here and just do a little brief walk around the town basically there's a little short and guy shopping street here on the opposite side of this block I think most shops will be closed but it is what it is here's the local post office and let's see I think we can go down here uh, my family is not with me, no. I'm here with uh, four others. An uh, Englishman, uh, a Spanish guy and a woman from Portugal. So a nice, diverse little uh, group of people. I'm the youngest, which is kind of surprising, considering that I'm not that young anymore. But. Uh, uh, yeah. 
really nice people, all of them. In, in the company. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really ask, like I was not invited to this because of my YouTube channel, it had nothing to do with it. Um, so actually one of the other participants is joining me on this walk, but he's very shy, so he's, uh, yeah, he doesn't want to get featured, but he just knocked on my, on my back and said, there's a huge spider over there, and indeed, this is pretty huge. Seems like the spider is also a bit shy. It gets bothered by me being too close to it. <laughs> but um, yeah. <laughs> okay now. <laughs> But yeah, I, I don't personally think it's appropriate to walk around filming inside this uh, shrine, to be honest. Like this, this place is quite special and there's a lot of like monks in training here right now. So we were actually yeah, attending the morning service at five o'clock this morning, which was quite the experience. So I think, yeah, let's, let's walk in. We can at least walk through the temple grounds. I didn't really expect to, to be able to do a stream actually, but we finished today's schedule a little bit sooner than anticipated. So that's why I managed to do this. Here's the place is huge. It's like you can easily get lost in there, and it's like several layers. It's built on a on a hillside. Um, yeah, the buildings are beautiful. The scenery, it's like everything. Hmm. I hear that many of you seem to want to know what the inside looks like. Maybe I'll ask them after the stream if I can get permission to do a little, maybe not a live stream, but do a little uh, 4K video from the inside. Hey Lemmy, good to see you. Was there a weather check? No, no, no weather check. It's actually a bit chilly. Okay, it's 22 degrees, but I'm, I'm wearing long sleeves and I feel a little bit chilly. So here's a map of the whole place. So we're currently down here. And yes, uh, this morning we walked up all the way to this, this. That's the main, I believe the main building. At least that's where we watched the, the morning service which was quite an experience, actually. the entrance yeah it does feel like it's cold mountain air coming down here this morning was really cold nine degrees when we went to the to the morning service Yes, Lemmy, I'm in Fukui. I'm at Eheji. On a Zazen tour. 
basically kind of evaluating it. They are planning to, to start offering this tour to Western tourists, but we were invited to kind of give them some feedback before it goes, goes live. Yeah, Sazen tour. I've been up since 4.30 this morning <laughs> and I did Sazen on a mountain top earlier today. We were told that this gate, these stairs, this is a pretty special place. This is only opened when members of the royal family comes here. I don't know if you can see it, but that building over there has the royal family's crest on the walls or on the doors. But yeah, I'm a little bit bummed that I couldn't do this yesterday because yesterday at this time it was like this lovely afternoon, like the last sun rays were shining through the, the trees and it was just so, so beautiful. Um, today it's kind of cloudy as you can see, but it's still very, very beautiful though. Let's see, I'm a little bit worried, like the, over here it's very nice too, but it feels like one of those places where signal can drop rapidly. So we'll see. As long as the signal is stable, I will continue walking this way, but if it starts breaking down, I'll just uh, turn around. They said that anyone can come here and visit and uh, join the morning service if they want. Uh, so it's, it's a place that's kind of open to, to anyone. But um, I think in order to make the most out of it, you, you need a guide and someone who can kind of explain some things for you because it's yeah, the whole history of this place and the... Uh, the life of the monks is very interesting. We actually had one of the monks joining us until just half an hour ago. Um, the guy who, who uh, we climbed the mountain with and did the meditation. Really, really nice, nice guy. Hello Brandon, uh, yeah, no, this trip is just to, to this place, only to Fukui. So I arrived yesterday and I will go back to Tokyo tomorrow. So just two nights here. Yeah, the signal is slowly Slowly, slowly creeping downwards as I'm going further this way. So we'll see how far we can make it. How old is this place? I think the first. 
I'm not 100% sure, but I think the first temple around here was built about 800 years ago. Uh, the current building is, the current buildings over here are not as old, uh, but mm, I wish I had a guide with me and I could ask. But, but this has been like an important site for this kind of, this type of, of Zen Buddhism. Uh, since uh, yeah, 800 years ago when a man named Dogen came here and founded, basically founded this, this uh, school of Zen Buddhism. Yeah, there's a bell over there. There's lots of bells inside the temple as well. camera do I use? Do you just use a camera to make videos? Uh, my live streams are always shot on an iPhone. Yeah, looks like the, the signal is getting really weak over here. So I don't think I can go much further, unfortunately. So I'll just turn around here. If a world war breaks out, will you move to Sweden or stay in Japan? I don't know. It depends on the involvement of, of those two countries, I guess. Are you being called to pray? No, not really. If we, if we wanted, we can join in like reading these sutras, as they're called in Zen Buddhism. Uh, but it was completely up to us. If we just wanted to sit and observe, we could do that. If we wanted to participate more, we can do that too. Let's see, can we walk up here? Is this grass or moss? Yeah, both, both. Yeah, seems like, ooh, signal gets really weak here. No, sorry, I'm turning around. Yeah, no cones around here, that's right. So annoying, there's nothing like this anywhere near where I live. Well, to be honest, there's not much like this near where I live either. <laughs> I have to go pretty far away to find a beautiful, gorgeous mountain temple like this. show you Did I get some yeah I guess I can show you this um, so this is from the the Zen session earlier today on the mountain top just before we started the meditation one of those people is me <laughs> those of you who know what I look like could probably easily recognize me. But yeah, it was beautiful, stunning views. And, uh, 
got a pretty good day today exercise wise as well yeah when we climbed the mountain it was actually clear then it got cloudy afterwards Ah, the subtitles appears before, before you, before the audio. That's yeah, that's a bit annoying, I guess. Ah, you can I did a the Zen retreat in Tsushima. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I really enjoyed. This is really just super scratching the surface of Zen Buddhism. I would, if I had a bit more time, I wouldn't mind coming to a place like this uh, for like a week or or so and uh, really try it out properly. For, uh, for how long was that retreat you, you did? We just passed 100 viewers. Nice. Thanks everybody for joining me. Interesting comment, Susan, but what does that have to do with anything here? I ah, stayed two days. Daniel and Yuka, yeah. Yeah, I was actually expecting our accommodation to be like super simple, like maybe staying inside a temple in a non-heated room or something like that but no we are we were treated to this very gorgeous luxury hotel so and I'm, I'm very grateful for that of course but it makes the experience a little bit less genuine at the same time yeah 900 more viewers and you'll get a face review <laughs> See, actually here, it's tiny little hint of autumn is starting to become visible here. There are some leaves that are starting to turn yellow. So this, this area, this region is, is uh, quite a bit colder than Tokyo. And uh, also, since it's on the coast of the Sea of Japan, it means that it snows a lot around here. The winters you are almost guaranteed to to see plenty of snow yeah signal is surprisingly good i did a little test when we walked around the temple to see like if it would be possible to stream here and yeah i didn't expect it but signal is surprisingly solid
Okay, so let's head down to the Shotengai area. Sun is setting in like another half an hour, then it gets really pitch black around here. This morning we could see some get some very good views of the stars. So that was very nice. Well, Daniel not really think, thinking about the iPhone 15 now. Basically, I see my iPhone just as a tool for my streams and it doesn't seem like the iPhone 15 would be any meaningful upgrade in that regard. Starry sky makes you jelly, jealous, Jenny? Yeah. Yeah, we can't really see that very often in, in uh, Tokyo either. So yeah, there's some souvenir shops, some restaurants. Soba restaurant, I think. Yeah, soba restaurant. I wouldn't mind some high quality soba, but we're having a a nice kaiseki dinner at the hotel so that's probably gonna be very nice as well yeah fukui cones that's right there's a cone there's a cone wonderful when are you releasing your game i don't know both me and my business partner or too busy with everything else in life right now so the game is kind of it's almost done but the last final touches is usually what takes the most time so I don't know when it's gonna happen oh, thank you Jenny sake to go with the soba thank you thank you Zen. Do you feel it? I've been feeling quite zen since arriving here. It is very peaceful. Cone count two, three, four. Even in rural Japan, you can't escape the cones. <laughs> Just like basically everywhere else in rural Japan, this area too seems uh, has a lot of like suffering from depopulation. Quite a lot of abandoned buildings. Not not here specifically, but uh, yeah, other areas. Immediately better signal among the cones. Yeah. Why is it so quiet here? Well, because it's a small town in rural Japan and it's uh, getting late. All the tourists are gone at this time. Soon it will be pitch black and uh, not much going on at night in a place like this. I've tried driving in Japan. No, I've never drive, driven a car anywhere because I don't have a driver's license. Mm. 
Zen-based tours. Yeah, and actually one interesting thing about Fukui is that they're currently working on extending the Shinkansen to Fukui and it will open in March next year. So then you can take the Shinkansen all the way from Tokyo to, to Fukui and arrive here in like two and a half hours, which is quite a bit faster than currently. Well, some shops are actually still open. Yes, Brandon and everybody else commenting about how quiet it is. Rural Japan and small towns in Japan are quiet. That's it's the most people living in places like this are elderly, and uh, yeah, there's not exactly a ton of parties going on. <laughs> but here's some loud, bored people on bikes coming. That's a bit of a surprise. This is the, what, five o'clock chime? Yes, five o'clock. So there's a few souvenir shops around here. Uh, I would guess that during the peak autumn season, it might be quite popular to come here to watch the autumn leaves and uh, yeah, visit this beautiful temple. Water looks incredibly clean. Not sure if it is, but it looks looks like it. I wish I could just continue walk down past this valley, and then you see some beautiful scenery with like just rice fields and open plains surrounded with by mountains. It's really beautiful but that's that's too far for me to walk and also I don't think it's very safe to walk these streets once it gets dark because you might be in a traffic accident uh, so it not, it's not extremely pedestrian friendly down here so yeah I will just head back to my hotel and wave goodbye to you there but I hope you enjoyed this little bonus stream uh, and uh, can you show me your face? No, I don't show my face on my channel. Sorry. Yeah, I'll see. I think tomorrow's schedule is not, we're not having any morning activity. So actually I could maybe record a little 4K video in the morning. He doesn't have a face. That's right. That's right, Ray. Don't have a face anymore. See, even the even the traffic light is taking some time off. Maybe they switch it off after five o'clock. Could be. Because basically all these parkings, it's just for people coming to visit the temple.
curly hair but no no face that's right yeah i don't know why, why why one is flashing red and one is flashing orange that's that's unique maybe it's some sort of secret signal But yeah, thank you so much for joining me back here at the hotel. And uh, if you're around, you should come check this place out. The temple is truly, truly beautiful and worth seeing with your own eyes. And also, if you have deep pockets, highly recommend staying here. Food is amazing, rooms are comfortable, and uh, just a very very pleasant place well, yeah, I'm back where I started thank you so much for watching and uh, I uh, will see you all again soon Bye bye. Hello. Auf Wiedersehen und Matane.